Hello, welcome to the Lisa Love Stitching Podcast. My name is Lisa and you can find me on Instagram as Lisa Love Stitching or on Ravelry as Lisa Loves Yarn 76. Um, welcome back if you're a returning viewer and if you're new, I hope you'll come back um, again. Please click the subscribe button below if you enjoy watching and you can also click on the little bell that pops up and that will give you a notification when I next post a video. So it's been a few weeks since I last posted. I hope you've all been keeping well. Um, I think, I don't know if I mentioned it last time, but I went to see my lung specialist and um, he gave me the results of my recent updated tests. Um, I had to have a CT scan and that. And I am in technically in remission with sarcoidosis, so that's good news. Um, but it looks as though I have seronegative rheumatoid arthritis. Yay! So the joint pain is because of that probably and not because of the sarcoidosis. So anyway, um, I'm trying to just deal with the chronic pain from that at the moment. Um, take Panadol as required and if I need to I'll take something stronger but I prefer to try and manage it that way for the next while because I don't like taking medications. Anyway, that's that good news. What else has been happening? Um, lots of planning going in for my nan's birthday. So I've booked my flights to Newcastle for June. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, I'll be having an extended stay. Wayne will come home because he's got to go to work. Um, but I'll be staying for a week and going to the sampler retreat, which I'm really looking forward to, which I paid the final payment for that the other day. Um, and what else has been happening? The weather's slightly starting to get cooler <laughs> in the night anyway, during the night, but at the moment it's a bit humid. I think it might eventually rain tomorrow or something, but tomorrow Wayne and I are um, planning on going on the train down to the Gold Coast and riding the trams at the Gold Coast because we haven't done that yet, and then I'll pack a picnic lunch maybe a salad and some snacks and then might get a coffee while we're down there and then we'll get the train home so that'll be a little all-day adventure for us tomorrow uh, which we're looking forward to um, and if that doesn't happen we might go to the Museum of Queensland um, at South Bank to see the exhibition on the astronauts so they've got part of the Apollo um, aircraft in there and different things so that would be interesting. And then this morning I um, met up with a cousin that I didn't know I had that lives 10 minutes from me and her and her husband met me for coffee, which was really lovely. And um, it's just interesting when you meet family, it's like you already know them. <laughs> I don't know, it just is a weird feeling. Uh, it's just like you know they're your people. <laughs> anyway, um, she reminded me of my mum and my aunt because of her colouring, like she had um, fair skin with the red hair so um, yeah it was really really nice to catch up with her and we're going to catch up again soon to do some family history stuff so that was really nice and yeah that's about it for this week just busy being with work and things um, I did um, have an FFO but not a cross stitch one so I'll just quickly show you um, I've mentioned it before and I think I showed you I was making a um, colour block um, garter stripe blanket for my nephew that's um, being due to be born on the um, 8th of May um, although his dad's hoping he arrives on the 4th of May because he's a big Star Wars fan may the 4th be with you so anyway um, I finished the blanket and um, I haven't washed it yet, but I've woven in all the ends, so it is a, technically an FFO. I just haven't washed it yet. I'm going to wait till just before the baby's due so that it's nice and fresh for baby to have. And um, here it is. Ta-da! So it's quite long and nice and um, soft um, to the touch. Nice and squishy texture to the fabric because it's garter stitch, so it'll be all right for tummy time on the floor or in the cot or on the um, pram and good for traveling and it's nice and light as well um, so it won't be heavy on the baby but nice and light 
to put over them but still keep them warm. This is a superwash merino and it's a DK or 8 ply um, yarn and what I did was I cast on 100 stitches up here and I used Dove Grey Swish Knit Pick Swish DK um, and Dove Grey in the in between the colours and then I just did all the different colours of the rainbow and I just slipped the last three stitches at the end of each row to make an eye cord which just finishes off the edge really nicely and then I did an eye cord bind off so that just makes that look neat so this is the only end that's not an eye cord but that's the top end to go up under baby's chin and then the rest is all finished off with an edge so that's really nice so yeah I'm very happy with that and it was really fun to knit because I'm like oh just finish this color and so it was quite addictive and um, a good one to pick up because it was just garter stitch you only had to remember to slip three stitches at the end of each row with the yarn in front and um, yeah I think it turned out a nice little blanket so if you're wanting to do it just cast on a hundred stitches slip the last three stitches with the yarn in front at the end of every row and do an eye cord bind off and that's it and I just yeah put the color in between that you could do whatever color combo you like so that's my FFO okay what have I been working on so um, I went through about a week or two where I just didn't do much stitching I had lost a bit of my oomph in regard to the sampler you know when you're just working on the same thing and it's not that I don't enjoy it but I've been working on the same thing since last year and I just run out of steam a bit so I thought okay I'll try stitching something else um, in the meantime uh, and that'll get me my like fit make me feel refreshed and then I'll be get my mojo back to do the stitching so the thing I took up while I was having a break was this which is a little Scotty dog to be with a little coat but I'm not doing the colors on the coat it's so hard to see because it's um this is 28 count even weave but I'm doing it one oh two over one and it's really hard for me to see so what do I do with the book so I'm just keeping it simple so I'm doing this Scotty dog here also I shouldn't show you the chart should I Silly Lisa. Here we go. So, it's this little dog here with the coat, but I'm not doing the Christmassy holly on the thing. I'm just going to do plain white. I might still do green on the collar. And then just above here, I'm going to um, stitch my name Lisa. And then I'm going to turn that into a little brooch for my name tag. Because the one I made earlier, I hadn't finished it off. Um, it's just too big. So, oh, and this is um, a chart from Ultimate Cross Stitch, volume 19, 2018. And it's, um, yeah, I think that one came out at the end of the year. So um, that's on page 25, is these little Christmassy Scotty dogs, which I thought was really cute. So... I'm just doing it on 28 count even weave and it's in an ecru colorway. I think it's called Brittany. And yeah, that's what I've done so far. So I just need to go back to that at some stage and then I'll just put my name and then it'll be like a little square brooch. And I, the other day I made, um, for the baby shower, I made little brooches. So um, I'll just put one of those little brooch things I'll stitch that on the back and that'll be perfect for when I go away to the um, retreat sampler retreat so that's that one doesn't it feel exciting I had something different to show you <laughs> you'd be getting bored by now um, so that got me my mojo back so if we ignore I haven't ironed this or anything if we ignore the black smudge in the middle here which I'm frogging at the moment because I was trying to do feet footprints for um, showing dance steps because my nan used to like to dance with pop um, but it didn't look very good it looked stupid so that's the thing I'm frogging it's crappy so I'll find some other solution there 
So this is what I've got done so far. I've got a few new motifs there, as you can see. So if I fold this over, these are two um, horseshoes I did. If you can tell it's a horseshoe, just here. And I just did that in like a gray. And then I did, let me just fold that over again. I did, during Nan's lifetime, the Harbour Bridge was constructed in Sydney and she lived in Sydney for a brief time back in the 40s, in 1943. So I did, I just freestyled my own Harbour Bridge in construction so it hasn't quite met up, so that's a deliberate thing. Um, it's supposed to show that the bridge is still being built. And the last thing I did was this cute set of Brighton beach huts from Melbourne which are the famous beach huts that you see down at the beach at Brighton um, and Nellie Stitches, um, Helen Dean, Nellie Stitches on Instagram suggested because I'd originally done three and she suggested I add another two to make it easier on the eye so I, I added this one and this one and it was really fun because once I got the n number of stitches I needed like the little pattern in my head that I made up I just made it up as I went along um, then I could just play up with the colours and change it up. So I did speckles here, plain, stripes. Um, so I think that turned out really cute. So that's that. So I really only have a couple more motifs to add and it's done. But I don't know how much to fill in, whether I really add a few extra other things in there to fill it in or just leave it simple. I don't know. I'll see. So I want to put something in the middle here where these steps were, I don't know, maybe some tennis rackets, Nan used to play, tennis used to be a big thing back in the day in the country when that was a big event, you know, everyone would play tennis and then socialise afterwards up in the country and then I've got some room down the bottom here to put some tiny little motifs, so I don't know. The other thing that I did which I regret is this 2 over 1, this is 32 count two over one I started to do like a pansy oh my god it's a nightmare it's so tiny anyway I'm committed now because to be perfectly honest it looks too hard to try and <laughs> it's too tight to try and undo that so that means if I've done that I'm gonna have to do something to match on the other side <laughs> anyway that's what's happened so it should look all right in the end, but I've got to finish it off. So, yeah, so I'm really happy with this. And I found a frame in Newcastle. Um, so what I'm going to do, because my nan has um, vision problems, um, talking to my friend Rebecca, um, she suggested I take it down unframed then Nan can have a few days to touch it and look at it and everything and then I'll take it to the framers and they can have it framed up for her so I found a really nice framer um, at Newcastle um, I think it's called framed by Aaron at Georgetown and he was really prompt in replying and it looks like they do really quality um, work and I checked if he does need a work framing and he said he does so that's what I'm gonna go with um, so yeah, I'll go, I'll go over there with mum and choose a frame and everything when I'm down in June. And, um, I was watching, um, Nicola Parkman from Hands Across the Sea. She, if you haven't watched her podcast, you should, cause she has them, I mean, she has the most beautiful samplers and, um, collection of, um, really high quality embroidery scissors like that, just beautiful. Um, but she had a friend make her a cover to roll up her samples in to protect them from dust and dirt and whatever to store them in or transport them and I thought that's a really good idea so I made one for myself now I just whipped it up last night it's not perfect or anything but um, I had some Anna Green Gables fabric so I used that and I had some lace that I had floating around so I used a bit of that and I just need to get some cream ribbon and that'll finish it off um, for the ties. If I make it again, because it's a bit floppy, I will um, add some interfacing and maybe some quilt batting and that will make it a bit more um, solid. 
So this is the inside. This is all Anne of Green Gables fabric. It sort of has Anne of Green Gables, Kindred Spirits. Um, and you'd, you'll, you'd find it easier to be bad than good if you have, if you have red hair. <laughs> and as a redhead, I can, uh, I can uh, sympathize with that. So, um, yeah, so that's the inside of the fabric. And this is the outside. There's little pictures of Anne and Green Gables and Cuthbert picking her up from the train station. And, yeah, so I thought that was really cute, that fabric. I got that a while ago, actually. And this is the lace panel I found. So I just stitched that on the end. And then what happens is you... Get your, mind you, I've got a needle in here. Let me take that out. I think that's all the needles. So, you get this. You get this, like that. And then, you just gently roll it up inside. And then I'll put some ribbon on to tie around it to secure it. And that way your item is safe from getting stuff dropped on it and dust and dirt. So that's that. Okay, that's all my whips so far. But boy, can I not wait till I get my sample finished because I've got a few things kitted up and I am going to be... I think it's going to happen just in time for May mania and I may end up not a start every day or anything like that but I think I might do what Lost in Floss are doing which is May your way and um or May my way I'm not sure what it's going to be the hashtag and um and just start a few new things as I want um so recently I got these zipper pouches for a few dollars um, and they come with like a little holder so you could actually hang it on a hook. Um, these clear pouches I got at Reject Shop and they're only a few dollars and they're just like giant um, pencil cases and they're perfect for kitting up your um, floss and chart and fabric um, before you, if you don't have enough project bags. So I've only really got three project bags. So these are perfect for kitting things up. So I've got one kitted up in here. And I'll just show you two I picked up from Spotlight, in, which is acquisitions, I suppose. But I picked up this Crafter's Choice 5mm um, foam board. And it's just an A4 piece to try out. So I'll just use a blade to cut it to size and then mount my work on that, um, like for my brooch and things like that. So see how that goes and also for my small pieces that I don't want to frame but I just want to decorate like Priscilla and Chelsea or Bonna. So I got that and okay so recently I made a couple of purchases oh firstly what, what, what should I do? I'll go through this stuff as acquisitions mail call slash whatever kits so recently I there was a um, lady I followed uh, journey of a stitcher she has an online store in Australia for cross stitch anyway she was um, oh do you like this my, my Stanthorpe mug that Wayne got me when he went away it's Stanthorpe in the snow yes Queensland does occasionally get snow I did a few years ago in Stanthorpe and that's a photo of it. I love Stanford, it's a really lovely area. Excuse me for drinking. Okay, um, she had an auction on her Instagram page because um, Scarlett let her, let her send her a chart, a sampler chart, to auction off for charity. And she chose the charity of um, Motor Neurone Disease. And my childhood friend, um, John Williams, sadly passed away from motor neurone disease uh, when he was 
quite young still, just um, in his early 30s. And um, it was very quick and very tragic, and uh, we all miss him very much. Um, oh, no. <laughs> I'm just going to pause. Oh, I can't pause, I don't think, on this one. Let me just be back in a second and I'll pick this up. Because everything's falling everywhere. And I hope my bum's not in the picture. Holy cow. Right. No more things to fall over. So, back to John. He was a wonderful young man, very talented. Um, he was a radio DJ. Um, he was a good friend and sadly motor neurone disease took him very quickly from us. And um, so I, it's a cause that I am um, passionate about and so I had no trouble putting in a bid for this sampler because it wasn't really for the sampler, I was happy to make a bid regardless. So even if I didn't win, I was still going, planning on making a donation. So anyway, I, got the, um, I was the one who made the highest bidder. I donated $30 to um, motor neurone disease. And I got this um, Elizabeth Masterson, um, a Scottish sampler, 1838. And it is just beautiful. I really can't wait to stitch this. I love all the different pots of flowers. And that border is lovely. I'll just show you. I think there's a... Let me see. Oh no, I thought there was a, a bigger picture of it. But anyway, that's the... That's the picture, really pretty. So I'm putting that away to start at some stage. It might not get started till next year. We'll see. Then um, I bought two patterns, two charts from her separately as well because I like to support small businesses. Um, so I got this um, Waxing Moon Design Springhouse Trio really cute little smalls this is number 182 and it's spring um, flowers and April showers and I just thought that was really cute I think it was the rainbow here that got me just adorable I'll see if I can open it that might have less glare there you go that's better so yeah so I really love this house with the rainbow and the, the big giant raindrops I love all of them, so I'm going to do all of them. And I've got the 80, um, 28 count. I got a big piece of that recently of the 28 count even weave. So I'm just going to use that for all my smalls. And it's just a nice neutral colour, so that'll be perfect. And I've got some of the threads here, but I ran out of um, little sandwich bags. These are the snack bags that I use for my, instead of buying floss bags because they're more expensive. I just get a pack of 50 um, of these little snack bags and they're just tiny and they've got a little label on so I can um, uh, write what DMC or thread if it's specialty thread on there. So that's what I got. It's only like, I don't know, $2 or something. Um, so I've got some of the thread there and some of the threads here in the floss bags. So that's all kitted up. I think I'm just missing one skein. And then, um, really lovely of her, she sent me a free chart from Waxing Moon Designs, which I'm only going to flash to you really quick because it's the chart, so I don't want to copy. So, doo -doo. Oh. Ready? Doo -doo. It's a sparrow. It's a sparrow. I thought it was a chook. It's a sparrow on a watermelon, which I thought was adorable. So I'll do that at some stage as well. So yeah, so I got that from Journey of a Stitcher. I'll try and remember to put everything down the bottom. And the other thing I got from her, which will go with another Pride and Prejudice one that I'm getting from Linen and Threads, is Plum Street Sampler. And it's by Paulette Stewart, A Gentleman's Daughter. He is a gentleman and I am a gentleman's daughter. So far we are equal, 1813. So if you watch Pride and Prejudice, you'll recognise that saying. Um, from El when um, Elizabeth confronts uh, Mr Darcy's aunt. Um, so this is a better view of it. Isn't that adorable? 
And I love the little British flag and then the little quilty flowers up here and the little sheepy and the birdie. And I guess that's supposed to be where Elizabeth lives. And so that's the other chart I got from her. And I've also ordered through Linen and Threads, which hasn't come yet, um, the chart for um, Elizabeth's library, saying I'll be thoroughly miserable if I don't have a good library, um, which I loved. So another thing I got recently was two charts from um, Linen and Threads. And that is one I've been desperately waiting on from Nashville is um, Fox and Rabbit Designs Botany Bay Sampler. I haven't seen any Australian samplers much, so it's really nice to have one that's Australian. And I used to work at Botany Bay. Um, so this is Botany Bay and that's the docks and all the ships coming in and everything. Um, so yeah, so I really like that. So I'm going to look forward to doing that fairly soon with, I don't know what size. Oh, it's a bit over half a metre, so the, the fabric I have is not big enough, but I'll have to get some fabric for that. And I don't know what, sorry about the crinkling. The linen they've used is 36 count legacy linen from Picture This Plus. So I got that one. And then I couldn't resist a last minute purchase. I couldn't resist the Spring Fling Bunny by Brenda Gervais. OMG, how flipping adorable is this bunny? Oh my gosh. And the little birdie. That is adorable. And I love the pink background absolutely love it so i'm gonna to have to try and get hold of that fabric or something similar it's 32 count in the pink linen by r and r reproductions and it uses dmc as well as weeks dye works gentle arts embroidery floss classic color works yeah so adorable i've seen um a few people stitching this and also recently um Priscilla um, from Stitch, uh, Stitching Housewives of Cross Stitch um, recently did a cute FFO and she um, stitched hers on aqua fabric and changed the bunny to like a grey, which would look cute as well, but I really do pink's my thing, so I think I'll still stick to the pink. So that's another one I got. And then recently I got a chart from um, Nashville ordered through motifs by hand. Hi Tash if you happen to be watching and I'm still waiting on a few things coming from the US through motifs by hand but I said it's no hurry because I mean I'm sorry Tash if if you're watching this I didn't mean to harass you the other day about where things were at because um, I've bought so many things recently I was losing track of what I'd received and what I had ordered. <laughs> um, so um, I ordered this quilting bee so that's the actual chart and then they've finished it on like a quilt fabric to make it look like a quilt block um, isn't it cute and it's got like little quilty f patterns on it so I really can't wait to do this so that's going to be one of my first ones maybe in May um, I said to Wayne I won't buy any more charts except maybe at the retreat um, but that doesn't mean I can't buy stuff to kit it up with. So I can buy fabric and floss. <laughs> That's my excuse. Um, so yeah, so the original design by Jan Janine McGowan. And it's the Blue Flower Quilting Bee. And that uses Gentle Art and Crescent Colours. And they do do DMC conversions. And it's done on 40 count sheep straw linen. And thank you, Tash. She recently, when she sent my order, she um, included a little sample of 50 Count Kingston by Zweigart. Um, it's beautiful, but I might have to save that for like embroidery rather than cross stitch because um, sadly, I, even with a magnifying glass, I can't see the holes to count them. 
So <laughs> I tried and I failed. So I've got to uh, frog what I did. I was trying to do a little small thing on there. Um, so I'm going to frog that and keep that aside to maybe do like an embroidery because I don't need to count squares as such, like threads. Oh, some dogs next door having a fight. Okay, nice. Okay, so that's that one. And I've kitted it up. I got this... Um, Twenty-eight count. I think I got this. I think it's twenty-eight count or thirty-two count. I can't remember. I can't even remember where I got it from recently. I've lost track. I got this from Linen and Threads. I think it's Picture This Plus or something. Anyway, this nice beige fabric to go with it, and I've got all the DMC to go with it. I thought I'll just do it in DMC. So I've got all the DMC. Um, so it's got all those lovely greens and browns and black and a pale beige and a bit of a gold. So yes, that's really pretty. And mail call. Thank you, Laura. Oh my God. I got the cutest bag, project bag, with a handle, I should say, with a handle. And this is Laura's first time making project bags and she did an awesome job. And it's got the clear front with the cute kitty cats. Cute kitty cats. And it's huge, so it fits everything. And um, it's got a nice big zipper. And um, so I've put my quilting bee in here ready to go in May. So thank you, Laura. She just did that as a surprise and I really appreciate it. Crafty friends are the best friends, I tell you. Um, she's so lovely. Thank you. Mwah. And she also sent me the cutest little pillow. So recently I sent her a chart for the little sheet from Plum Street Samplers. And she did it. I sent some linen as well so she could practice because she hadn't started cross stitch till recently. She's done an amazing job. Absolutely amazing. She's so talented. And... Um, I sent her linen because she's coming to the retreat, so I wanted her to learn how to stitch on linen. So I thought a little small project would be perfect. So I sent her this linen that's sort of like a blue-grey. And she, she did me a little sheepy. A little sheepy. Look at it, isn't it cute? Her little love heart. Oh, my God, it's adorable. Thank you, Laura. I love it. So I think of Laura every time I see this. I have it sitting up in my sewing table. And, um, yeah, I think of her every time I go into my sewing room. And it just makes my heart sing. Thank you, Laura. And um, so that was a really nice surprise that came in the mail. And then the only other thing is to show you, I think, that's it. So the last things to show you was recently I went to my... Um, Cross Stitches of Brisbane group meetup um, it was on a Saturday and coming up on the 14th it's on a Sunday and one of the ladies was giving away some patterns that they don't need anymore so I picked this up isn't that cute all these little sparrows and robins or finches and it's sort of like the English winter with holly and stuff so I thought that was really cute and Christmassy but not too Christmassy so you could still have it out just as a winter thing and I also picked up this cute little house which is a Georgian what is it Regency Gothic pink houses are common in the eastern part of England and particularly in Suffolk the color was achieved by mixing ox blood with plaster for rendering the house is based on the Regency Gothic villa, which might have been built in the early part of the 19th century and inspired by Strawberry Hill. So that's really cute. So I got that as well to do at some stage, and I liked it because it wasn't too huge, although it is full coverage. Um, excuse me. <sighs> and then the last thing, I just bought this um, 365 cross-stitch designs. I really like the kitty cat on the front. That was what drew it to me. And it's also got these cute um, 
little ornaments on perforated paper, which I might do for Christmas. Yeah, so it had like lots of little smalls in it, so I just got that. That's the recent one, so that's um, new for 2019, volume 8. I saw that at my local newsagent. So that's everything I have today to show you. Um, hopefully I can do a podcast probably over the Easter break, and hopefully I might have finished the um, sampler by then and can have started something different so you won't be sick of looking at the same thing over and over. So check out Lost in Floss. They're a really good podcast, and they just did an excellent tutorial on um, finishing a pillow. And um, it just felt like watching it that you were with them in the room, um, just, you know, friends hanging out, sewing together and stuff. So that was really good. And they're very funny. Um, so I definitely recommend you check out Lost in Floss. And what else? Um, check out Laura's podcast, Lola Star Creates, and also her Instagram. And, oh, actually, I think she's just changed it to Laura Nicholson. Look up Laura Nicholson on um, Instagram, and then she'll have a link in her profile to her um, YouTube channel. And... If you're in Australia, check out um, Journey the Stitcher, Motifs by Hand, um, and Linen and Threads for charts. I've had excellent service from all of them, and um, really great communication, and um, yeah, so really good. And um, what else? Uh, I can't think. My brain's gone. Anyway, got work this week and next week I'm working Monday, not this week coming, but the following week I'm working Monday, Tuesday, and then um, I'm using my work from home days on the Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then it'll be Easter, and then I'm being allowed to work from home on the public holidays in between, so it'll feel, even though I'm working in between, it'll feel like I'm having a big break. So I'm looking forward to Easter coming up and um, getting some cross-stitch done. Maybe going on some picnics with Wayne and day trips or something. Um, yeah, so it should be really good. So whatever you're doing till then, take care, look after yourself, keep stitching and um, enjoy whatever you're doing. Until next time, bye.